everyone. Welcome back to Clockwork Kitchen. I'm Nicole, and today we're gonna to talk about what to cook when you can't leave the house, or even if you just don't want to. I'm filming this in March 2020, which means that right now we're in the middle of the coronavirus pandemic. And a lot of us have run to the store and stocked up on food and house essentials in case we're not allowed to leave the house and are all practicing social distancing to avoid spreading the virus to anyone. And that also means that a lot of you are probably standing in your kitchen right now and thinking, so I bought all this food, but what the heck am I gonna make with it? So to help you out, I came up with four very versatile meals that you can make from food that you probably have in your kitchen right now so that you don't have to leave the house. And if you're watching this way into the future, you should still stick around because even though I hope everything has gone back to normal, these are still really great meal ideas for when you feel like you have no idea what to cook and you'd much rather Netflix and chill than go out. Okay, let's move on to meal idea number one, which is a Mediterranean pasta. Now I do want to clarify that I'm being very purposeful in calling these meals and not recipes. I'm very adamant that this channel is not about just giving you guys recipes that I make up, but more about finding ways to help you feel more comfortable in your kitchen. So I'm going to walk you through directions on how to make each of these meals, but the actual ingredients and the exact amount of those ingredients is going to be completely up to you because A, I don't know exactly what you have in your kitchen. You might have something a little bit different from me and B, I don't know exactly how you like your meals. You might want to make them slightly different from the way that I do and you should absolutely feel free to do that. All right, let's dive in. First up, as I said, is a Mediterranean pasta. So the first thing you wanna do is make some pasta. You can pick any kind of shape that you want. I made these farfalle pasta over here, or bow tie pasta, or I actually learned today that they should technically be called butterfly pasta because farfalle means butterfly in Italy. But you could really use any kind of shape, penne, spaghetti, or linguine, orzo, those really tiny pastas that look kind of like rice. So I already went ahead and made the pasta with well-salted water. I have a lot of different ingredients prepped on this plate already. So this is asparagus. We had fresh asparagus, so I just went ahead and roasted this up and then I just took it and chopped it up into like two inch, three inch pieces. You can chop them up however big you want. If you bought frozen asparagus, a lot of times those come pre-chopped, so that might already be decided for you. You could also put any other kind of vegetable that you want in here that you might have either fresh or frozen. So this could work really well with frozen spinach, frozen broccoli or fresh broccoli. The next thing that I have here are these marinated artichokes. So these come jars. We get them from Trader Joe's. They come with a lot of different herbs in there. I think there's definitely some oregano, some thyme, a lot of like what they probably call Tuscan herbs. So I took those hearts and I chopped them up into smaller pieces. If they don't come marinated, then you could add your own spices, of course. And if you don't have artichokes, then you don't have to include these. Some quartered olives. The last ingredient that we're gonna add in are sun-dried tomatoes. These are another Trader Joe's product that we always get. If you do not have sun-dried tomatoes, because I know, you know, not everybody is super into sun-dried tomatoes like I am, you can absolutely use some canned tomatoes that you might have on hand. So you have the fire roasted ones that already come with all those herbs in there. That would be really awesome to just throw in here. These are diced tomatoes with no, no salt added at all and they're pretty plain diced tomatoes, but you could definitely doctor this up with a few spices. So I have here oregano, some garlic powder, some dried basil. You could throw these in with the diced tomatoes when they're just cold and mix it up that way. Or if you really want to incorporate those flavors, then you can put the diced tomatoes over the stove or even in the microwave and just heat it up for a little bit. I'm also gonna add a little bit of crushed red pepper. I like things a little bit spicy. I like things to have a little bit of a kick in there. You know, there isn't really a sauce in here. I think in this case, I'm since we finished this jar, I might just take some of this oil and throw just this on top since it's already got these really great herbs. But if you, again, did not use marinated tomatoes, then you could definitely take some olive oil and drizzle this on top. So you could serve this hot, you can serve it cold if you want it more of like a pasta salad type of thing. This is plenty for me, but you could definitely serve this up with some meat. You could cook that up and throw it into the pasta or serve it on the side of this and it'll be a really great filling meal. <laughs> For those of you that are not super into carbs, this is a great one for you. So we're gonna be making a frittata, which is essentially 
a crustless quiche. So you wanna take a pan that is preferably oven safe, but if you don't have an oven safe pan, then this will still work just fine. But you wanna put that over the fire. And then what we're gonna be adding in is potatoes, some sausage, broccoli, and onions. This recipe though is extremely versatile. You can add whatever you want in here, whatever kind of meat or vegetables you have. It'll all pretty much work really, really well in here. While we're waiting for this to heat up, I've already whisked up some eggs over on the counter. So you need about eight eggs or so. If you have really large eggs, you might be able to get away with just six. If you take those eggs, whisk them up and put in some milk. You could also use yogurt if you don't have milk on hand, but I think milk is slightly preferable. You wanna use about a half a cup or so, depending on how fluffy you like your eggs because this milk is essentially just going to, I don't know all the chemistry of it, but it's essentially just going to make your eggs really, really nice and fluffy. If you don't have any of that, you could also use water. You probably don't want half a cup of water, but maybe a quarter cup of water and maybe add in like an extra egg or two, although if you're using 12, that's probably going to be plenty, but the water will at least add that kind of fluffiness that you're looking for. This is some sage sausage that we had in the freezer that I had thawed, and I've pulled off the casing so that I'm able to turn it into ground. But you could use whatever you want. You could use bacon, ground turkey, ground beef, shredded chicken, smoked salmon. You don't even have to use any meat if you don't want to. Totally up to you. So I'm just gonna break these up and let these saute up and get nice and brown. Okay, so the sausage is done and I have moved that off onto a plate to the side. So I'm just gonna throw these potatoes in and get these all sauteed up. You really do wanna make sure that you cut these pretty small. These are maybe cut at cubes of like a quarter of an inch. If you cut them really big, your potatoes are just really gonna struggle to cook up in time. You might really burn the outside before the inside gets cooked if there's not enough surface area on that potato. So this is just gonna kinda do its thing. If you really, really need to, you could get your lid for the pan and put that on top and that can help sort of steam your potatoes and cook them a little bit faster or a little bit better, especially if you did end up with slightly larger pieces. We are gonna be adding a bunch of uh, vegetables to this. I already have some onions left over from another dish and then I had some broccoli that we had bought fresh, um, so I just blanched that up, or you know, you could also steam it. You wanna cut them kinda small as well, uh, just because we are basically making an egg pie, and so to have really, really large pieces of like broccoli in there is, I think, kinda weird to me, but if you really like it, then you know, go for it. But you could use really, really any vegetable that you have around, you could use like asparagus, Brussels sprouts, you could shred those up, spinach, arugula, kale, tomatoes would be really great. I mean, honestly, like any sort of flavor combination that you really like the sound of that you think would work really well, you know, in eggs is a great one to turn to. All right, these are starting to get a little brown and I'm actually gonna add some salt in here. I think we'll also get some pepper in here. And then if you don't have regular potatoes, you could also do this with sweet potatoes, cauliflower, butternut squash. So there's a lot of substitutes for all sorts of things in here. You don't wanna let them get completely soft. Let me pull out a fork and see. They're starting to get kind of tender. I can pierce it, but I'm definitely getting resistance. So that's probably at the point that I wanna add in my vegetables because I need these to cook up a little bit as well. I'm also noticing that a lot of things seem to be sticking to the pan, so I'm just gonna add a little bit more oil here just to make sure that nothing's gonna stick to the pan and nothing's gonna burn. Anyway, you just wanna get this sauteing up until it's all nice and tender, and then we're gonna throw the sausage back in. Now, as I was saying, you want to be using a uh, oven-proof pan if you can, but if you're really not sure, what you can do is after you're done cooking all of this, you can transfer everything into a pie pan. So you want uh, probably like a nine inch pie pan, or if you don't even have that, like a cake pan should work pretty well. And you wanna make sure that you grease it with butter first, just to make sure that the frittata doesn't stick to that. You don't have to worry so much about your saute pan if you're doing it in, on the stove, because you've already got some of the oil working in here, so you're good to go there. And so essentially what you wanna do is you wanna take all of your ingredients, put them into the pie pan, and then you wanna cover it with the eggs. Or in this case, if you're just doing it in the pan that you have on the stove, then once we're done, we're gonna put all the ingredients together, and then we're gonna put the eggs on top. Sprinkle some cheese on top as well, if you have that grated cheese, or little dollops of goat cheese work really well. We're gonna put it in the oven at 425 degrees. You want the rack of your oven to be in like what's called the upper thirds for about, 
I want to say like 12 to 15 minutes, but it maybe could take as little as 10, depending on if your oven is really, really strong. You basically want to cook it until when you shake it a little bit, it doesn't like jiggle everywhere. So you essentially just want to make sure that your eggs are set. If it has like the tiniest little jiggle in the middle, you're probably still okay, because when you pull it out, it's going to continue to cook in that pan as it's sitting to cool down. It'll probably be a little bit golden on the edges, maybe a little bit bubbly, depending on how much cheese you added. And then you're pretty much good to go. You wanna let it cool down a little bit. Once your frittata is done, cut it up into little pie slices and serve it up with a side salad or some toasty bread or any vegetables that you might have, like some green beans or some asparagus, and it'll make a really, really great meal. to make is a Mexican bean salad. I really think that black beans are going to be the best base for this, but if you bought a variety of different kinds of beans, you could make this a two bean or a three bean or however many bean Mexican salad. I think gorgonzola, gorgonzola, garbanzo beans would work really well in here. Um, I also think you could use kidney beans or black eyed peas, cannellini beans or those great northern beans. You could kind of play around and go a lot of different directions with this, but we just have black beans for right now, so that's what I'm gonna use. And then you wanna start building your salad. So I chopped up a bunch of different veggies. This is red onion, green onion, and green pepper, but whatever you might have. So some of you might just have red onion, or some of you might just have green onion, or even if you just have a yellow onion or a white onion, that would work just fine in place of all these onions. Some of you might also just have like the frozen onion pepper blend. Because I have these fresh, I don't really wanna cook them. I think they work really well with like a nice bite in here of like raw onion. But again, if you don't really love the taste of raw onion in general, you could totally saute up these onions and peppers and get that going in here and I think it would work just as well. This is just a bell pepper that I had around, but if you only have a red bell pepper or an orange one or a yellow one, you know, any of those will work really well in here. So from here, you wanna start building in some spices and some things just to flavor this salad. The honey is maybe a little bit of an unorthodox thing to add in, but I kind of like the little bit of sweetness in there. We're not gonna dump a whole bunch in. So I'll probably put in, I don't know, maybe maybe like a teaspoon or two. I'm not gonna get too crazy, or maybe that's a tablespoon's worth. If you don't have honey, or you could use agave syrup. If you don't have either of those things, I wouldn't put sugar in here. In that case, just don't put anything in and you will probably be okay. And we're gonna put in some of these spices. So this is some garlic powder. I don't wanna go too overboard with the spices because then when you bite it, you're gonna get kind of all these granules in your teeth and it's gonna feel like you're eating like black bean salad that's been tossed with sand or something. So I don't wanna do that. This is some cumin powder that we have. And then we have some oregano here. And then lastly, I have some cayenne pepper here. A little bit goes a long way. So just, you know, be careful with this one. If you don't have cayenne pepper, you can use red pepper flakes, which we just used in the Mediterranean pasta. Any kind of like ground or flaked pepper would work really well in here. If you have pickled jalapenos or fresh jalapenos, that would work really well, or any kind of spicy pepper, serrano pepper, or even a poblano pepper, if you chop that up small, you could definitely add in some extra stuff like fresh tomato, or even if you wanna use that canned tomato. Get some salt going in here, black beans everywhere. The last thing that we want is a little bit of like an acidic punch because the thing to always keep in mind, and maybe you'll you know, already tell from all the ingredients that I'm throwing in here, but the beans really have this kind of like, you know, not carby, but similar to the way that carbs can just kind of absorb all this flavor. So you want something that's going to balance that out. So we're adding in like the raw onions, which are gonna add kind of that bite. We're adding in a little bit of spiciness to also offset that. And then we're also gonna add in some citrus. So there's a lot of options here. We have limes and all you have is lemon. You could put in lemon. And if you don't have any of those citruses, I think that some sort of vinegar would work really well. So you could use red wine vinegar or apple cider vinegar. Those things have a different flavor from the citrus. So you do wanna like maybe put just like a teaspoon at a time and taste as you go. Or if you have dressings lying around, a dressing would work really well in here. Like if I didn't have these limes, we do have like a Greek vinaigrette in the fridge. Those flavors are maybe a little bit different from a Mexican one, but that's gonna give you a little bit of that sort of citrusy, vinegary, acidic punch that you're looking for. All right, and that's basically our Mexican bean salad. From here, you get to decide your own adventure in terms of how you wanna eat it. So 100%, you could just eat it as is, just kind of take spoonfuls to the face and enjoy this as your meal. 
It's also gonna be really great to put on salads. So if you happen to have greens that you bought, you could put this on top of that salad, make like a red wine vinaigrette, or if you have some sort of Mexican vinaigrette. Other options are if you have tortilla chips, which we don't, so I'm not able to show that to you, but if you have tortilla chips, you could put this over that with some cheese if you have that, and then put that you know in the oven, toast that up, make some nachos. Another really great option is tacos or quesadillas. You can make these really simply just with some cheese and with those black beans on some tortillas. Any kind of cheese will do. You don't have to have, per se, the traditional cheeses. I would say maybe brie or some one of those soft cheeses might be a little bit weird, but goat cheese, honestly, would not be bad. Or you could do cheddar if you have that around, or we have some fontina as well, or even some gruyere. All of those would work well as long as you like the flavor combination, then feel free to throw that in. Just like with the Mediterranean pasta, you can totally add some meat either on top of this or on the side. I'm sure there are a bunch of other ways that you could use this black bean salad, and if you think of other ways, let me know in the comments down below. The last dish we're gonna make is a quick Asian rice. So obviously to start this off, you need some rice. Everything in this dish is pretty much cooked. What you're primarily doing is just trying to heat it up. So I'm gonna be putting uh, some vegetables in here. This is the broccoli from the frittata before. And then I have some peas, which I had frozen and I just defrosted them. I also have some green onions, which I had left over. And then the last ingredient is kimchi. Now, if you don't have kimchi, I would say just leave this part out. And some of you guys might be looking at me and being like, who stocks kimchi? I do. Uh, <laughs> Kimchi is a really, really great ingredient to have on hand. It takes a really long time to go bad because all that stuff in there has already been fermented. So think pickles, you know, that stuff really lasts a long time. If you don't already have this, as I said, and you're, you know, in the middle of this coronavirus stuff, then don't go out and get any. But if this is, you know, in the future or once we are allowed out of our houses, I would highly recommend going and getting some kimchi, especially if you can go to an Asian market and get an authentic kind. It's essentially a Korean condiment that's made up primarily of cabbage, and then they might add some other things in there. They definitely add like a spicy red sauce, which I really like the flavor of, but it's just so great to have on hand because it's really not going to go bad quickly, and so you can easily like whip this up anytime as long as you have kimchi and rice and soy sauce in the house, basically. And then you can add extra stuff, you know, as needed. So I'm gonna let this heat up a little bit. And then, as I said, we have these vegetables. Now, again, and I feel like I'm gonna sound like a broken record, th these vegetables are all interchangeable. I just used the broccoli because I already had some made from the frittata and the peas I happen to have easily on hand, but you could also totally use edamame. Green beans would be really great in here. Just kind of play around. For all these recipes, this is kind of your opportunity to get creative. You're restricted by what you have in the house. And so just kind of make some stuff up, see what works well together. You have a bit of, you know, creative freedom, creative license, a lot of fun with it. See what you come up with and maybe you'll surprise yourself. So like all the other dishes in here, meat is optional. You could totally throw in, again, some ground meat into here if that's what you have. I mean, beef, pork, even turkey would be really, really good in here. If all you have is whole things, then you could serve it, you know, on top of this rice and that would be really good, or you could shred some chicken and put it in here. I just like to add some soy sauce just to give it some extra flavor. There's already a ton of flavor coming from the kimchi here, so I'm not really trying to overpower that too much. If you're not using the kimchi and therefore you kind of want to like beef this up with some more flavor, the soy sauce is obviously really good, but I think also any other Asian sauce that you have would be a great go-to. So if you have that like teriyaki sauce that's like buried in your fridge, now is the time to dig it out and throw it on here. Some hoisin sauce would be great. If you have fish sauce, you could throw that on. Kind of play around with some flavors and see what you end up with. And usually, if it's all kind of in that Asian-y vein, it'll usually work pretty well together. So then you just finish this off with your green onion. If you have it, if you don't have it, don't worry about it. Maybe if you have some cashews and some sesame seeds, throw some on here. That'll add a really nice nutty flavor. And this is pretty much done. Hi. I know, I know, I'm almost done, I'm almost done. Then we can go, okay? But let me finish this, please. I know. All right, come on, come up here, up here, this side. You're better with this side, aren't you? There we go. Hello, welcome. 
Thank you so much for watching Clockwork Kitchen. I really hope that I gave you some good ideas for what to make right now when we're all stuck inside. And if you're struggling with anything food related, especially in these difficult times right now, leave me a comment down below. I'd love to help. It always helps to support my channel if you give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the bell icon down below to be notified next time I post. Until next time, stay safe out there. Bye for now. Ollie, do you know what time it is? Oh my goodness, do you know what time it is? No, I don't have any food. Yeah, you ready to go for a walk? Are you ready? Are you ready to go for a walk? Oh my goodness, yes you are. <laughs>